My friends, on this Saturday, July 3rd, we are reading the second half of the final chapter of the book of Acts. I want to take a few minutes today to reflect not just on these 20 or so verses, but to reflect on the entirety of this book. I want you to remember back with me to the very first chapter in the 8th verse, where we read sort of the instructions that Jesus gave immediately before the ascension, where he explained the calling of his followers. And he said, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. That's in large part the, the root of the title of this series, Church Under Fire. We're called to be a church lit on fire with our love for Christ. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses, Jesus said, in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. And the remainder of this book, the next 27 and a half chapters, have been a fulfillment of that from Jerusalem to Judea, to Samaria, and then to the ends of the earth. And for this big last portion of the book of Acts, what we've read about is Paul trying to reach what would be considered essentially the ends of the earth, this small Middle Eastern religion that is now trying to reach the heart of the known world, the heart of the Roman Empire, the city of Rome itself. And that's where Paul arrives today in our very last reading in this study of Acts. After three months, we set sail in a ship that had wintered in the island, a ship of Alexandria with the twin gods as a figurehead. Putting in at Syracuse, we stayed there for three days. And from there we made a circuit and arrived at Regium. After one day a south wind sprang up, and on the second day we came to Puteoli. There we found brothers and were invited to stay with them for seven days. And so we came to Rome. And the brothers there, when they had heard about us, came as far as the forum of Appius and the three taverns to meet us. On seeing them, Paul thanked God and took courage. And when we came into Rome, Paul was allowed to stay by himself with the soldier who guarded him. After three days, he called together the local leader of the Jews. And when, he, and when they had gathered, he said to them, Brothers, though I had done nothing against our people or the customs of our fathers, yet I was delivered as a prisoner from Jerusalem into the hands of the Romans. When they had examined me, they wished to set me at liberty because there was no reason for the death penalty in my case. But because the Jews objected, I was compelled to appeal to Caesar, though I had no charge to bring against my nation. For this reason, therefore, I have asked to see you and speak with you, since it is because of the hope of Israel that I am wearing this chain. And they said to him, We have received no letters from Judea about you, and none of the brothers coming here has reported or spoken any evil about you. But we desire to hear from you what your views are. For with regard to this sect, we know that everywhere it is spoken against. When they had appointed a day for him, they came to him at his lodging in great numbers. From morning till evening he expounded to them, testifying to the kingdom of God and trying to convince them about Jesus both from the law of Moses and from the prophets. And some were convinced by what he said, but others disbelieved. And disagreeing among themselves, they departed after Paul made one statement. The Holy Spirit was right in saying to your fathers, through Isaiah the prophet, Go to this people and say, You will indeed hear, but never understand. And you will indeed see, but never perceive. For this people's hearts has grown dull, and with their ears they can barely hear, and with their eyes they have closed, lest they should see, yes, lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and turn, and I would heal them. Therefore let it be known to you that this salvation of God 
has been sent to the Gentiles, they will listen. He lived there two years at his own expense and welcomed all who came to him, proclaiming the kingdom of God and teaching about the Lord Jesus Christ with all boldness and without hindrance. My brothers and sisters, I cannot believe that we have completed this journey today through the book of Acts. We began this back on Monday, May 24th. That wasn't this month. That wasn't last month. That was the month before. And I want to leave you with three thoughts on this day, three big thoughts that I'd like you to take away. First of all, today is not the end of this journey. It feels, you may notice, like a huge cliffhanger at the end. There's no resolution to Paul's story. It doesn't say what happened to him in Rome. It doesn't say where he went next. And I think this points to something significant. We're not meant to see resolution here. This is not meant to be the end of your study of Scripture. So that's the first thing I want us to think about. Don't use today as an excuse to say, I am done reading the Bible. I have read my book of the Bible for the year. You know, in August, we're going to do an intentional study of the book of Genesis. We'll jump from, from the first book of the New Testament after the Gospels, the book of Acts, back to the first book of the Old Testament, the book of Genesis. I want us to all think about how can we study the Bible. Now, I know that some of us may think, oh, well, the Bible, I don't, I don't have the training, I don't have the knowledge. I don't have enough background. I'm not a a biblical scholar. And that's all right. Because the Bible, the Word of God, is meant to speak to each of us in our lives. It speaks to each of us different ways. You know, I find that, that I study the same passages of Scripture year after year because I preach on the same ones year after year. I'm sure this will be even more um, notable after decades of ministry. But every time I come back to these same passages, there are new insights. God is working differently in my life. God is opening new windows to understand how he was at work in the Bible and how this is relevant to my life. So first of all, don't stop reading the Bible just because we finished the book of Acts. I'd encourage you to to maybe pick a book of, of your own or even just read a verse every day, or a psalm every day, or or the Book of Common Prayer suggests a daily office, a way of of reading the Old Testament and the New Testament and psalms every day. But one way or another, continue to engage with Scripture. That's the first thing that I hope we've taken out of this, this journey together. Second of all, I hope that we have all grown in our our desire to engage with God on a daily basis. You know, this has been, frankly, a little bit of a challenge for me at times because every day I've had to sit down and intentionally think and pray about how Scripture is speaking to my life and what I can share with you. And at the root of this, This has caused me to spend more time in prayer, more time listening to how God is speaking to me and what I can share with you. And I hope, frankly, that this continues to be a pattern in my life, even before we we pick up our study of Genesis in the middle of August. I hope for you, as you've learned to set this time aside each day, that you also find a growing and a greater desire to hear God's word on a daily basis. There's so many different forms of prayer out there, but I'd encourage you to think about 
a daily prayer practice. People sometimes talk about the first 15, you know, setting aside the first 15 minutes of your day to listen to how God is speaking to you. Maybe that falls in the form of what the Jesuits call an examine, where you intentionally think about in the preceding 24 hours, where did you see God at work? Where did God call out to you? How did you respond? How did you not respond? And then you pray that God helps reveal himself to you in the 24 hours ahead. Or maybe your daily prayer practice looks more like reading scripture and praying about how God is speaking to you in that scripture. Maybe you follow the prayer book. There's um, a, a daily little service for individuals and families and maybe praying that plus some intercessions for others and some prayers of gratitude can turn into your daily practice. Maybe it's more meditative and you read just a verse of scripture and again and again you, and you end up repeating a few of the words from this verse again and again in a form of centering prayer. But whatever you do, my second goal that has come out of this study of the book of Acts is that you grow in your prayer life with God. Third of all, I hope you continue to engage with corporate worship. Through this whole study of the book of Acts, I have never wanted this to be a replacement for corporate worship, assuming you're safe and able in light of this um, receding pandemic. But this should ideally be a supplement to joining us for corporate worship on a weekly basis. For many of us, that will be on Sunday morning. If you don't feel comfortable with the crowds of Sunday morning, well, there's 7.30, which is very small. Um, but even aside from that, you can join us for one of our Wednesday, one of our midweek services at 7 a.m. or at noon. But regardless, this dimension of corporate worship is so important. And I think we've seen that as we've journeyed through Acts together. Notice how there's always a group of people traveling together. Notice the term that Paul always calls other Christians. He calls them brothers and sisters. This is language that, frankly, I've tried to echo in this, this study of the book of Acts. This is part of the reason why, frankly, I'm not really going to talk about in much detail today's verses from the book of Acts because tomorrow I will. Tomorrow morning as we gather as a community, gather as brothers and sisters at St. Luke's, as we gather to, first of all, study God's word, as we gather, second of all, to pray to God as we offer the prayers of the people to God, as we read the collect of the day, as we offer the silent prayers on our hearts. And third of all, as we gather as a body of Christ, as brothers and sisters, in a place where there are people who know and love me and can pray for me, as a body where there are people who may be hurting, and I'm called to be there for them, and you are too. So these are the three lessons that I want us on a macro level to take out of this study of the book of Acts. Continue reading scripture, continue praying, and continue gathering for corporate worship. After all, in the end, our call is to be part of this body, this body of Christ that is on a mission to not only share the gospel in Jerusalem, not only in Judea, not only in Samaria, but to the ends of the earth. My brothers and sisters, that is our call. That is our mission. That is what it means to be a church set on fire, set on fire out of our love of Christ, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and trusting in the love of God. My brothers and sisters, will you bow your heads one last time with me as we pray over these last verses in the book of Acts. 
Dear God, we pray today that you strengthen us. We pray that as we've journeyed through this book of Acts, that you have used it to shape us and grow us and call us to become increasingly the people who you created us to be. Help us engage with Scripture tomorrow, the next day, this week ahead, and as we move into the second half of this year. Help us to continue to pray to you. Pray without ceasing, as Paul wrote. Pray with each breath, pray with each week, pray with each day that we're given. And help us to continue to draw together as a body of Christ, as brothers and sisters, as a community pulled together and then sent out on mission, almost like um, the breathing of lungs, coming together and going out into the world, coming together and going out into the world, breathing in, breathing out. God, we pray that in each of these dimensions of our lives that you have used this journey through the book of Acts to help us grow, but above all, help us trust each day in your love, in your grace, in your perfect peace, a peace that passes all understanding, which you have revealed most perfectly in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. In his holy name we pray. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I do truly pray that you will join us tomorrow at St. Luke's, online at 9 or 11, or in person at 7.30, 9 or 11, as we not only bring to a close this book of Acts, but as we celebrate Independence Day, and as we remember the perfect freedom that we are each offered through Jesus Christ. God bless you, my brothers and sisters. One last time, I will encourage you to like this video or click subscribe below, as that will notify you when we start sharing videos in our study of the book of Genesis in about a month and a half. God bless you.